Watch it say, like, your fucking PC can't run this shit. Get a better PC, scrub. Your fucking PC can't handle the majesty that is Dream Daddy ad Oh god, graphics quality daddy- yeah. Fucking A! I'm f really- Oh, this is gonna be a cold opening! Yes! Yes, I'm on board already. Alright. That is way too loud! <laughs> Hang on. Hello everyone, hello and welcome. How are you doing? I don't need to say much, look at- <laughs> We're playing Dream Daddy, the dad dating simulator. I've moved on from pigeons to, um... To a selection of hunky dads. This game was made by Game Grumps, in case you didn't know. Uh, let's just get right the fuck into- Oh god. You're never too busy or important to be kind to others. So, uh, truer words were never spoken. I'm gonna move one ear off, because it's quite loud. I'm sleeping. Still sleeping. Dad. Dad! <laughs> Wake up. Pretend to be dead. I let my tongue roll out of my mouth and stop breathing. <laughs> Amanda shakes me. Go on, Dad. This hasn't worked on me since I was six. <laughs> So, sorry, Amanda, this is the end for me. Swear to God. I bequeath to you all of my earthly possessions. Spread my ashes over my recliner. Okay, well, your corpse better get into the moving van because it's leaving soon. I finally, and that's presumably my daughter. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn and stretch. Morning, Manda Panda. Aww. Jesus. Dad breath. Burn. Sick burn. All dads have awful breath. In case you didn't know. It's better to be early than late. Well, I guess. Build that dad. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, no, this is fine. This is fine. We're gonna... I'd rather not have chest hair, but I don't know if that's a... Why am I wearing a crop top? What? I mean, you know, some guys can just pull off crop tops, but... I get... Yeah, that's fine. Uh, two, uh, whatever, we'll go with that. I'm pale as f Oh, okay, you can get rid of the hair, that's fine then. Alright. Head. Which one is my head? Do you have chin dimples? Yes, you do. But that jawline is way too strong for me. We're gonna have to go over it anyway. Do you have an emo- Oh, look, Danny hair. You can be Danny if you want. An Aaron's man bun. That's one fucker of a receding hairline, holy shit. We're gonna go with this kind of Ross-like cut, because it's close to mine, and red. There we go. Oh, we could go Kwaidesu. No. We need to look as tired as possible. That's those are Ninja Brian eyes, basically. Yes, I always look sad. Fuck, god, you do get to make your own dad. I'm not ready to be a father. Not if this is part of the process. Mirror nose, Jesus, hawk nose. That nose, this nose, that'll do. Mouths. Yeesh. My lips are not that perky. Uh, uh, yeah, that'll do. This is too much. This is, this is too much, it is already too much. I don't, I mean, fuck. I mean, sh fuck, shit, I mean, I don't know. We'll go with that, that's fine. Facial hair, do you have stubble? No? We'll go with smooth then. I don't wear glasses. I have an ear piercing, but that's not available. How could- oh wait. There we go, found it. That's fine. Clothing. Presumably I'm not- oh, this is- oh. Oh, they knew. They knew that's what you'd want. There's Bergy. Uh, there's egg tits. And a ca Oh, that's really tempting. There's a- Ooh, ooh, you can look pretty snazzy. That's gosh darn snazzy. But it has to be the cat shirt. Because I have to also look like a loser. Otherwise, I don't look like me. Name that dad. Yes, this is very similar to me. We'll, we'll just call it me. To make this as creepy as possible, we'll put myself in this. That's fine. Be that dad. I like it. Don't trust gas station egg sandwiches. True to life. Did you fall asleep packing? Well, obviously. Why would you ask the question? Jesus Christ, I look like an alien. I got most of it done, I think. Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, straggler. What's in it? 
I'm going to move the mouse slightly away from the keyboard because that hadn't occurred to me. Sorry. Looking at the box, I see a bunch of old photos and little photo albums. I haven't seen these in years. Pull out one of the dusty albums from the top bar and begin. It's baby pictures. You're not going to be happy with this. It's the coolest baby I've ever seen. The only way of far- I guess mother and I. I don't know if it's dad dating simulator, right? Maybe I should be like... I've got to date dads. Okay, we'll say this is alternative future. I used to be I used to be straight and then things changed. The only way your mother and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. Wouldn't that fuck up your eyes? In like the development of your eyes? I don't know enough about biology, but I feel like it would. Nice. Halloween when you were maybe four? <laughs> That dragon costume is fucking awesome. Kind of looks like uh, Leonardo from the Ninja Turtles. You can decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess dragon. That's a good choice. Mm. Just a good choice. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. Wow. Mm. Right. Definitely repress that memory. This was you and your horse phase, which every girl goes through, I swear. Aww. Dad. I believe you named that plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. That's a good name. Aww. I don't think that was his. <laughs> I quickly snatch you away and hold it above her head with my superior dad arms, which I have in real life. Nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. Yeah, that's what I do. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you and your scar band. Scar bands are fucking sick. That's not blackmail. Scar bands are fucking awesome. Ouch, kid. The scumminist manifesto had a chance back in the day. That's good. That's good. I like it. I I need to go. There's a guy I know who's into scar. I need to get start a band by that name. I look off into the distance and reminisce about that rad horn section. You better fucking believe it. Hey, it's Emma P. Uh, no, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two up. Uh, True life. Dad, Emma R's been my best friend since I was seven. Given seven, give it like a little bit of effort. All oh, right, Emma P was the one who tried to steal people's pets, fired a flaming tennis ball at the police station, pooped her pants during the sleepover. I'm going with the tennis ball. Light of fluid, tennis ball, tennis racket, right? Dad, that was you! <laughs> I do that in real life. I do things and then tell stories about other people doing the thing I did. Alright, I was a wild child. I was six when you did it. <laughs> okay, Amanda, I wasn't aiming for the police station. It just happened there was a police station in the vicinity of where I wanted to hit a flaming tennis ball. I mean, it's Aww. fair. Yeah, I remember you explaining that to the police. Wouldn't they consider that as, like, borderline terrorist action? You'd be in big fucking trouble. They didn't believe me either. Huh. I gotta show this to MRR later. She'll get a kick out of it. The first photography award you ever won. Photography is sick. Uh, as you can see by the quality of the face cam, um, I don't know the first thing about anything like that. Yeah, and it got us a $20 gift card to McFriday's. And then you got food poisoning from the cheesy tostada blaz. Yeah. I think you mean food poisoning, you know? With a Z. Aww. Yes. The dad jokes are starting. Still can't pass drive past McFridays without gagging. Still proud of you, though. One last photo. Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. Oh. I finally decide to break the silence. This is the day we adopted you? I mean, I don't know if that's actually, like, um, a character development choice, like, uh, when me and your mother or when me and your father. I don't know if it's a character development choice or if it's a cruel joke. So I'm gonna go with this was the day you were born. It's not as if my wife has an identity anyway. It's kind of a funny story. We got into a car accident right there in the hospital parking lot. It wasn't anything big, just a fender bender, but of course I was freaking out. And the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. But your mother, oh man. She holds my hand, looks me directly in the eyes. The calmest I've ever seen her. She says, it's okay, it's all gonna be okay. 
I was expecting that to be funny. I don't know why. I think I'm in the wrong. I was in the wrong mindset for that moment. Oh. I'm guessing she's either gone or passed away. I stare at the picture for longer. Maybe too long. I miss her. Can't even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. Huh. She pats me on the back. Oh. Come on, pops. We gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. You're right. Oh wow, my car is fucking sick. Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your mother and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? You always had very strong arms. <laughs> hey, remember when I shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? You were a very imaginative child. <laughs> All right. Hey, remember when I broke the back window pl We get it. It's fine, you break stuff. Yeah. And there will be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. Memories to make and stuff to break. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watch my daughter grow up in this house. It will forever hold a place in my heart, but it stings a little bit to leave it behind. This is a longer intro than I thought it'd be. <laughs> this episode might run a little longer. I'm ready. Ready for Freddy. The moving van begins to pull away, and I get the car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear in the rearview mirror. So. So what? So sell me on our cool new pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. Isn't that just Markiplier? Burn! I love Markiplier. Nestled in beautiful, scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features. Multiple places to sleep. Not only are there bedrooms for your sleeping pleasure, but couches and floor space where you can, yes, catch a wink. Yeah. What a deal! I mean, if sleep weren't for the week, well, you sleep more than anyone I know. I admit my faults. I keep it real. Anyway, it's also smaller than our last house. Ah. Cozier, one might argue. Oh, she's good. Good spin. Hey. I think it's great. Won't we be closer to a lot, a lot of cool stuff that we can walk to so I don't have to waste gas? And I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know... <laughs> Amanda, you know you're gonna have to learn to parallel park at some point, right? No, that shit's horrible. Hmm. Not gonna happen. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitudes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Look, it's going to be difficult to look my girlfriend in the eye after this video, anyway. But the jokes as well. She's going to click off. If she even watches this, she's going to click the fuck off. I want to say about five minutes in. But if you, if you're still here, sweetie, you're doing well. All right. I don't know how to do that. You don't can't do a three point turn. I don't even have a license. I can do a three point turn. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet, so you won't have to chase any rowdy teens off your lawn. You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. Huh? I'm in my last year of high school, I'm practically dust. Yeah, you're a real... Huh. Don't you dare. Senior. <sighs> <laughs> Citizen. Hmm. Is that it? <laughs> I thought that was more of a joke there. But I won't forget it, so it's Telltale Games now. So what's item number one on the new house agenda? Well first, we'll need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. I still have to install the washer and dryer, we need to go grocery shopping. Pops, cool your jets. You have to promise me that we're going to take a break and explore the neighborhood. Alright, alright. We'll get some work done and then check the area out. When am I going to meet the hunks? Pull up to the new house and step inside. The lawn is freshly mown and the for sale sign is still in the yard. We're going to kick that shit down. Did she tell me she just- YES! <laughs> she is my daughter. This is a weird experience. A couple times now I've said something and she's proceeded to do the thing I said. That's- this is a really weird feeling actually. Nice form, sweepy. I got a problem with authority! <laughs> Fuck your authority! I'm so proud. Oh. Kind of am actually. All that karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. An ice cream sandwich. Sweetie, it's 10 a.m. Did you even see all the dogs in the park nearby? You know it. Thank you for moving us to an area where the dog to person ratio is very high. I only want what's best for you. Yeah. I hope you're prepared for the frequency at which I interrupt conversations to yell dog to rock it way up. I mean, you do that a lot already. Yeah. Hey, dog! <laughs> Wait, false alarm. It's just a funny shaped rock. How do you mix that up? If you want to see real dogs so bad, let's go to that park around the corner. Oh shit. The solo from Kid Charlemagne is the greatest guitar solo ever recorded. Why do I get the feeling Brian wrote that? 
Amanda and I begins, begin a stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the street, the flowers are in bloom, and the faint smell of a nearby barbecue drifts through the air. I love the smell of barbecue. It's so good. It doesn't even have to be meat. Just the smell of barbecue. This place is nice. Fucking inspired! Mm. Too nice. <laughs> Something's wrong. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You can never be too careful. See that baby in that stroller over there? Government operative. You fucking know it. I'm quite cons- Alright, I'm gonna take a quick pause for a moment just to talk to you guys for a sec. I just mentioned it about the door, but... I don't know if it's the fact that Game Grumps has molded my sense of humor so much, or if my sense of humor was already like this anyway, but it's freaking me out how much these are sounding like things I'd say. Genuinely, in real life. The daughter s does and says things I would think and say, or that my girlfriend even would think and say, which is an even weirder comparison. Uh, and then my character says, it's weird. It's weird. I don't know how I feel about it. It's fucking weird. <laughs> it's really well done, but it's fucking weird. And it makes me uncomfortable. Government operative. We're on to you, baby. We walk for a while and eventually end up at a small park. Toddlers chase each other through the playground and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench. Uh, sorry. We start to make our way over to it when... Heads up! Whoa. Ow. Do you know that's actually... They have talked about it before. Not a genuine actual phobia or fear. But like, a state of anxiety I get when walking through parks is that I will get hit by a random ball. I think that stemmed from my school days, but I, I have a, like a bit of a, like I said, fear is too strong a word, but I get really paranoid and anxious just feel too strong. But that's kind of what it is when I walk through a park. If people are playing football, my eyes are on them the whole time. I'm like, if that ball fucking comes towards me, I'm going to see it. A frisbee. Well, actually, well, actually, no, that could hurt more. Smaller point, more focus, but you know, I mean, it's mostly a ball. I don't care about frisbees. Frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Woof. That dog threw a frisbee at me. Huh. A corgi! Oh, that's a weird looking dog. The art style does not lend itself well to dogs. I do love corgi, so. A corgi with a neat plaid handkerchief tied around its neck bounds up to me, wagging its tail. Did you throw this thing at my head? Borf. He runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with his nose. Oh god, this is the cutest dog. Apart upon me your wisdom, tiny dog. Woof woof. How do you have tomorrow? Do you have tomorrow's lottery numbers? Bork. Got it. I'm gonna be rich tomorrow. You definitely could have caught that. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes the frisbee from me. Say hello, ladies and gentlemen, to hunk number one. He has a nice taste in Hawaiian shirts. The facial hair is thick, yet well tamed and luxurious. Granted, there's something of a beer belly, but you can tell by his confidence that he is a man who is happy within his own shell. Truly a wonderful contestant for the place of my dad hunk. Guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us take frisbee from me. You know, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. Well, fuck, man. I mean, some of us don't have a lot of practice. It's a new technique. It's like disc golf, but the goal is my face. It looks like you're winning. Hey! I'm Brian! That's not Brian! <laughs> Why'd you call him press like the least Brian person? I'm referring to Ninja Brian, not Brian's in general, or Brian Wecht, as his name is. I'm pretty sure that's the joke. I'm just messing with you. I'm Brian, by the way. I'm... Adam, and this is my daughter Amanda. Weird that we both have names beginning with A. I look over at Amanda only to find her sitting on the ground rubbing the dog's tummy. Hi. Hmm. Your dog's cool. Ah, old Maxwell sure hmm. loves the attention. Maxwell is a good name for a dog. It's great to see another father and daughter out here on such a sunny day. Where's yours? Brian gestures over to a grassy knoll where a young girl sits on a checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. She puts it down and heads over to us. This is Daisy. She's reading the Brothers Karap Karamazov. Her teachers tell me that she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. That's weird, actually, because back in school... Uh, well, more like preschool. Well, um, I'm not sure what terms are for different places, but like, you know, you have your first, the first school, the second school, and then high school, secondary school, whatever you call it. But in the first school, I was slated as having really good reading skills. Like, um, they moved me on to some quite difficult books. 
which I stopped reading, not because they were too difficult, but because they were too fucking boring. I was reading it, and I was like, I don't want to read it. I'm like f five. I want to read. I want to read Harry Potter, right? I was a child. I don't want to read whatever the fuck that was. I can't remember. But yeah, this is a little fact about me. You're welcome. How old is she? Ten. She's a precocious little youngster. Whoa. My natural dad instinct kicks in. I must brag about my child's accomplishments. My child will defeat your child in a test of strength! She will lift your child over her head. She will defeat your child in a ladder match. 